This is the truth of what I find attractive. I have only one tattoo and I don't know if I've shown you two. Worst date you ever had. He was a nice guy, but I'm not <laughs> with the mafia. Yo, welcome back to another new video. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. I am going to be doing a q and I asked you guys to submit questions for me, so I'll be going through all of them. If you guys like videos like this and want to see more kind of personal videos, then please drop it down in the comments, like the video. Let me know that you like the, this kind of style of video and like getting to know me, I guess. Are you single? Maybe. Did you have somebody in mind? Someone said, do you believe in Bigfoot? And I would say no. I would say no. <laughs> Can you dunk over Speedy? I don't think I've ever been in the same room as him, so I don't know how tall he is, but maybe. <laughs> Stay tuned for TwitchCon. We will see. Okay, I'm gonna say their full fucking, I'm gonna say your full name. George Washington's AR. Start an OnlyFans for feet. Get your nasty ass kinks out of my fucking DMs. <laughs> Sorry, I hate feet, man. Get yourself away from me. I don't want to know that you're into anything. I don't want to know shit about what you like. Keep it away from me. And no, I'm not going to start an OnlyFans for feet. Thank you for thinking I have attractive feet, though. That's like nice, I guess. If I sent you an invitation to my wedding, would you come? Yes. <laughs> yeah, 100% I would come to your wedding. What the fuck? Hey, thank you for even thinking about inviting me. That's really cute. I appreciate that. I've been to like one wedding as an adult and it was very fun. Yeah, I'd love to come to your wedding. That's like the sweetest thing ever. Please invite me. Oh my God. What's your favorite pickup line? The one that came to mind immediately was, are you a toaster? Because I would die to have a bath with you. It's shocking, but also I think one of my viewers told me that one day and I just thought it was insane. I think regular pickup lines are very cheesy. Ooh, one that I'm pretty sure I came up with this, but I don't recall. Are you free next Valentine's day? But having it be like a year out or half a year out. You free next Valentine's Day? That shit, romantic. What would be your last meal and who with? My last meal would be bang and barta, which is an Indian dish that I really fucking love. It's eggplant over rice and then some garlic naan bread. Fuck, it's so good. And then I would probably wanna have it with, uh, if I could bring someone back from the dead, Robin Williams would be sick. I would love to eat bang and barta with Robin Williams. Ramen? Ramen? With Robin Williams. What the fuck am I saying calling him ramen? Huge inspiration, love that guy. Let's take a second to thank today's sponsor. Focus Fuel, these are my favorite energy gummies that exist in the world. They are so good. Now with much better international shipping deals. Not only is Focus Fuel delicious and comes in so many different flavors, it's also the easiest form of energy you could possibly have. Do you really, really, really wanna sit back and spend 25 minutes making a pot of coffee? I don't think you do. Two of these bad boys is the same amount of energy as a cup of coffee. So when you need energy on the Go, Focus Fuel really does have your back. Not only does this provide a ton of energy for you, but it also has additive focus benefits from natural ingredients, which is amazing. You need these right now. Use code EMMAROME for 10% off. Definitely give it a shot and let me know which of the flavors is your favorite. You can click the link in the description below and it'll take you right to the website. Enjoy the rest of the video. If you could create a video game, what kind of game would you make? I would make a game that was like half a cozy game and half a social deduction game. And I don't know how I would do that. I'm thinking of like mix Harvest Moon and like Among Us together. You know what I mean? Like old Harvest Moon, Stardew Valley, whatever, and Among Us. Like create some sort of a, a marriage between those two concepts. And I feel like that would be pretty cool. <laughs> Is that insane? I really think that'd be sick. How are you and your friends different on camera versus off camera? I think that for the most part, my friends and I are the same on camera versus off camera. What I've noticed in myself is since COVID and since not being in crowds all day, every day, I think I've become a little bit less social. I don't hate that. It just means like my social battery has a limit and I have to be aware of it. But for the most part, on a regular day, I am the same on camera versus off camera. It doesn't change that much. And I think people who've met me in person would say the same thing. Hopefully it's the same. If you go to TwitchCon this year, I'm going to TwitchCon. 
so hopefully I can meet you. And you can tell me yourself. Why don't you ever talk about if you're dating or if you're single? I feel like, and comment down below if you agree, I feel like people online are very parasocial because they feel like they know streamers, they feel like they know online content creators, and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think that content creators or celebrities, just because they make content, owe every aspect of their lives to the people that watch them. And I don't think that my dating life is relevant to my content. I also think that it can distract from my content and that's never really the goal. So if I don't have to share stuff like that, I won't. Yeah, I just don't, I don't think it's necessary for everyone to know everything about me all the time. That's basically it. I think I would only really talk about a relationship that I'm in if I ever got engaged. Because I feel like when you're like engaged or married to someone, it's very, very different from taste testing, taste testing this man. <laughs> Sorry if that's weird, but like, it's just not relevant yet. You know what I mean? It's not relevant. I have a few questions on people like shipping me with people and asking if I'm dating my friends. And I would like to say, although I appreciate you guys liking me and my dynamic with my friends, please don't, <laughs> please, please, please don't ship my friends. Don't ship me with my friends. Just please don't do that. It's fucking weird. Do you think you'll play any fighting games on stream? I'll probably play the new Dragon Ball game just for fun. I'm an extremely competitive human being. When I play something like that, I get a little bit obsessed with being good at it. This is why I got addicted to Valorant. When I started playing Valorant, I got fully addicted and I could not stop playing Valorant. I was playing it for three hours a day. Like I'd stream for four hours and then I get off and then I play Valorant. And that lasted like a year and a half. And I got my friends into my addiction and it was just bad. It was just bad for everyone's health. What got you into streaming and what makes you enjoy content creation? This is from somebody named Owen. Thank you for your question, Owen. I really appreciate it. Like six years ago, a friend of mine, his name is Swoozy. You may know him from YouTube. Uh, he does a lot of animation videos. Told me that I was funny and told me that I needed to start streaming. I did not take him seriously. <laughs> Actually, I kind of did, but like mostly I wanted to do YouTube at the time and I didn't really know what Twitch was. So I started a YouTube account instead and started making videos. That was fun. All of those videos are now now deleted because they make me cringe. Swoozy told me I was funny. He knew I was a gamer, so it was exactly the right path for me. I just got into YouTube videos first because that's what I grew up watching. I was like a huge YouTube kid. I made little dance videos uh, to Katy Perry songs. I would make shitty animations, which that's on a channel you'll never find, so. <laughs> Anyways, about four years ago, I was finishing my undergraduate degree. I was in my last like two years and I was studying for the LSATs, which is what you need before you go to law school. You have to you have to do an undergraduate degree, which mine was in business and law. And then you have to take the LSATs, which is like um, a sitting reasoning test that kind of gives you a placement that you use in your application for law school. And then you apply to law school and you go to law school. So that's kind of like the funnel. That's how it works. Between studying, which was basically all I did in a day, I would be playing games because I've played games my entire life since I was like four years old. So I'd like pull up Assassin's Creed and I'd play the new Assassin's Creed games on my computer, which I had just bought because I liked PC gaming, but I never had a PC that was good enough to actually game on. And eventually I started feeling like PC gaming and gaming in general was a bit of a waste of my time when I should be studying. So I thought, well, how do I make this a productive use of my time? And I thought back to my conversation with Swoozy where he said, you'd be really good at streaming. And I started streaming and it took off and it started doing so well for me that I felt like it would be silly for me to continue to go to law school when I could do that later on in my life. So I just stuck with streaming and here I am and it's been four years and I'm lucky enough to continue to do this as a career. Thanks for your support if you've supported me, it means a lot. And the second part of that question was what makes you enjoy content creation? And I have always been inspired by comedians. Anybody that can make other people laugh, I just really enjoy comedy, I really enjoy gaming. Anything that gives you kind of an escape from reality. I felt like ultimately, if I could do something for the rest of my life, even if it's unreasonable, if I could make people laugh, and have that be a job, that would be ideal for me. I'm really happy I stuck with it because I, I feel like I do make people laugh here and there, hopefully. It, it was my ultimate goal before, it seemed unreasonable, and I'm really lucky to be doing something where I feel like I can achieve that.
I like how different it is every day. I can play a different game daily and it, it never gets boring. I never get bored. I love doing this. I love it. Why are you and Pasta so funny together? It makes my day when you do videos together. <laughs> Thank you so much for the question, Robbie. I'm glad you think we're funny together. We are just two idiots that found one another that are very, very similar people. <laughs> you know how people think that they're soulmates? I think that if Pasta and I have soulmates, it's each other, but not romantically, you know? I mean, kind of, but like not really, because unfortunately we're both straight. I love her, she's amazing, she's so funny. She is the kindest, most empathetic person I've ever met. I've gone my entire life not having what I feel like is a best friend, like someone who really gets me and understands me. I feel like I've had a lot of really close friends, but I don't know if I've ever had a best friend because the way that I feel when I'm with pasta is so different from the way that I feel with other people and and not in like my other relationships are not as good it's just that like we have such a friendship that i don't even know how to describe it like we're just very close she's funny and i love her and i'm lucky to be your friend basically what are the best and worst things about Canada in your opinion? Hello from BC. Okay, interesting. The best things about Canada, no guns. <laughs> Not to get political, and I don't wanna get political because I've heard different perspectives from different people, but I think one thing that I really appreciate considering I'm around Americans all the time, typically in Canada, you don't have to worry about anybody having a gun around you at any time. Like it's very chill here when it comes to that. So you don't have to think about that as much. I feel like when I go to the states i'm like hyper aware that anybody could have a gun and it freaks me out a little bit maybe you guys are used to it let me know in the comments if you are but like that's nice i guess i, I kind of like that things i don't like about canada are none of my friends live here <laughs> i have so few friends from canada i have several like a few people that do what i do and understand what i do and like are my friends but for the most part a lot of my friends that i spend my days with they live in the states so i can't ever see them in person <laughs> also the housing prices are ridiculous so out of all of your friends friends, who is your absolute favorite friend? I love all my friends equally, except for Pasta. She stands above because we spend 24 hours of the day together and I love her so fucking much. I feel like I'm very lucky to be at a point where my friend group is very close and I could probably call any one of them and they would probably pick up. Let's try it. <laughs> I'm gonna call Tay. Let's see if she picks up. Calling Tater Tot. Pick the phone up, bitch. Pick up the fucking phone. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm filming a video. I was doing a test to see if you'd pick the phone up. <laughs> Bro, it got to like three rings and I was like, I was getting nervous. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I love you. I appreciate you. Okay, I'm gonna see you later. Say I love you back. Oh fuck, I gotta, I'm not saying it. I don't say it back to anybody. Say it back, Tay. Goodbye, I love you. I love you, bye. God fucking damn it. Anyways, it worked though. She still answered. Do you and the three idiots still have a good working relationship slash would do collaborations like in the past? I love those guys. I'll always respect them. I'll always love them always appreciate them and I'm still friends. We used to hang out in voice calls daily and that just doesn't really happen as much like and that's fine. If they asked me to film with them, I would do it in a heartbeat. And I think if I asked them for the same thing, they would probably film stuff with me for sure too. It's kind of like going to different schools. When you don't see them around as much and you're not used to doing stuff with them daily, it's easy to kind of like fall out of those friend groups and like those friendships. But I still respect them. I still love them. I would love to do more stuff with them in the future. Future. We're just kind of like doing our own things and that's that's fine, you know? Would you ever consider getting a VTuber model? I don't think so. Why? Let me tell you, it's very expensive. I've seen a lot of streamers, like traditional streamers, get VTubers and they say they're gonna use them for when they don't feel like putting on makeup or just wanna have like an off day. And then they never use their VTuber. And I know from my friends who are VTubers that getting a good rig and getting a good model is like thousands of dollars. I'm such a perfectionist that if I was to get one, I'd wanna do it right. I'd wanna spend the thousands of dollars and I don't know if I would use it. So I just don't think it's a good investment for me. You are a brand and a business. How do you market yourself? And do you feel like a lot of what you do is customer service? You get asked a lot of the same questions as people come into your stream and keeping the same enthusiasm while answering the same questions over and over again seems tedious. How do you keep up the energy? And more than that's just who you guys are. It has to be 
tedious occasionally? This is an interesting question. I feel like a lot of what streaming is, is very new, especially if you're doing it independently and you don't have like a management team to kind of point you in directions and, and like tell you what to do, which is kind of what I feel like an actor would be doing. When you're a streamer, yes, you are a brand in a business. I find the most successful streamers are personality based. So the more of yourself you show, the more of your personality you show. And if people like your personality, the better you do. For me, how do I market myself? Being presentable, being consistent. So streaming at the same time every day, keeping my brand image like clean. When I say that, I don't mean like PG because I'm definitely not PG as a content creator. I mean, clean as in like high quality and putting as much content out there that people want to see as possible. That's all really important stuff. I think if you have all of that, you're golden. I also think you have to really love this job because when you do what I do, when you're a streamer, you don't ever really get to stop. I think anybody who is like a business owner, you realize very quickly, this is not what a nine to five is at all. You don't get to turn your brain off. It's very like constant, but when you love it, it's worth it and it's fun. I feel very fortunate and very lucky to get to do this. I get to do this. It's not owed to me. I'm lucky that it works for me. I'm lucky that I'm in the 1% that can do this. Yeah, I just feel grateful kind of every day for the platform that I have. And do you feel like a lot of what you do is customer service? Not really, because I'm not selling you anything except for I'm being myself and people find me funny and so they watch. So like, if anything, I'm selling that product. So like they're enjoying the time that they have with me, which is really lucky for me that selling that, selling that works. I don't think it's tedious because because I like getting to know the people that watch me. If you're chatting in my community, oftentimes I get very used to your name and I kind of remember the people that are consistent, people that communicate with me daily, I'll remember you because you're a person to me. So when I get questions from like new viewers, it doesn't bother me because you're a human being to me. <laughs> I'm not mad that you don't know everything I've done in my life. You know what I mean? Why so much reaction content recently? Personally, reaction content makes me laugh a lot. <laughs> I love doing you laugh, you loses uh, because I feel like it's fun for my community to kind of play along and see if they laugh. And I also love making my friends laugh and I love laughing. So if I can make content of just me laughing and watching funny videos and that vibes with people online, then I'm going to do that. I really like it. Hopefully you really like it. Let me know down below if you do or don't. I would love to hear more. Also, like I have a place for gaming content. Twitch is my space for streaming whatever game I want, streaming whatever content I want and throwing everything and anything at the wall. I feel like YouTube is more of a space where you have to refine what you do and you have to pick and choose what you think is going to serve the audience you have the best. I like curating what I put on this channel a lot more, a lot more now. And I feel like it makes more sense and has more purpose to me if I'm like keeping it one style of content, which right now is reaction content and then lifestyle stuff. I'm gonna mix in some lifestyle stuff. So like vlogs, etc. Future life plans. All right, great question. Love that you asked this. Number one, keep doing what I'm doing. Number two, I am moving. I'm staying with my parents right now. I'm living in my parents' place. It turns out getting a visa to move to the United States of America is actually incredibly difficult and a lot longer of a process than I initially thought. I'm just waiting to hear back from my lawyer right now and I'm waiting to hear back from the US government. I'm either going to move to the US or I'm going to move probably to the West Coast of Canada because why not do something totally different for once, you know? I'm also really itching to just take it like a fuck it trip. I I'm calling it a fuck it trip. I wanna just go to the airport with a bag in my IRL backpack and I wanna go to a random country and I wanna stay there for like four days or five days and just see some shit and then come home. Among Us with Nogla and friends again. Yeah, I would love to play Among Us with Nogla. I think Nogla is really funny and fun to be around and a good content creator. So I would love to do more stuff with them. Favorite Australian animal, koalas. I think koalas are adorable. I have like a thing for bears. I just like bears, but primarily like pandas. I have only one tattoo and I've shown this on stream a bunch. I don't know if I've shown YouTube. It's just this like little panda. I really like him and I think he's cute. I'm a sucker for soft, cuddly, fluffy, stupid ass bears. What do you fear is gonna be the biggest adjustment to living in the States? I think something that I'm very afraid of is not feeling safe. 
I don't know if this is a thing, but I hear from a lot of my friends that live in Los Angeles. I've heard from at least five people that their cars have been stolen. That shit scares the fuck out of me. <laughs> what do you mean? Five out of 10 people are getting their shit thieved. What do you mean? Any interest in connecting to other streamers and people in the area you're moving to? Yes, that's the whole point. I hope that I get to make a lot of friends. I have a really good group of individuals that I work with and like stream with daily. It's not that I'm looking for more people to like stream with and I will if things are good and we vibe and get along and are funny together. But for the most part, I'm excited just to like hang out with Kara and Tay and Elena and Shubble in person and like some of my guy friends. And just, I'm honestly just excited for that. I think that'll be really fun. Are you prepared to switch from Tim Hortons and maple syrup to Dunkin' Donuts and BO? What's BO? Is that just body odor? Why is BO the opposite of maple syrup? What the fuck does that mean? I don't know what that means. I don't go to Tim Hortons much because Tim Hortons went down fucking hill in the past five-ish years, six years. So it sucks now. <laughs> I mostly just drink like black coffees, like a black coffee hot or a black coffee iced. I'm not really worried because it's the same thing no matter where the fuck you go. And if you fuck up black coffee, I, I don't know how you even fuck that up. It's hot beans and water. That's it. Oh, I will be bringing like a, a jug of maple syrup with me though when I move. One million percent. What is your favorite song right now? I've been on a Don Tolliver kick recently. I've been obsessed with Don Tolliver. I feel like I've always heard him in other people's music and as like a side guy, but now I've just been listening to everything that he's ever done and I'm addicted. I'm also really into an artist called Lily Is That You? It's all like one word. She has a lot of music that I really like. Before you started streaming, what streamers were your inspiration to start? I didn't really watch anybody. The only thing I can remember watching was Choco Taco, I believe is his name. He was streaming Red Dead Redemption 2 when that came out and I didn't have a PS5 or, or a PC or anything that I could play it on. And I remember being obsessed with that game and wanting to play it so bad, but not being able to and just watching him play it for a little bit. I never really watched any streamers before I started streaming. I feel like I watch a lot more streamers now because like I'll pull up my friend's stream sometimes when I'm getting work done, like making a thumbnail for a video or whatever else. Yeah, no, that's kind of it. I should watch them more. <laughs> I, should, I should watch them more. I should. What are your next big goals you have set? Biggest goal is prioritizing YouTube more. I really like YouTube. I've always liked YouTube a ton. When you stream like eight hour days almost every day, it's hard to prioritize something else. I'm gonna try to change my schedule a little bit so I can make sure not only am I still giving stream a good amount of attention, but I'm also putting some more energy specifically into YouTube and creating videos that aren't just like clips from stream, but are like independent videos that you guys will appreciate and like more curated pieces. Someone said, do you ever miss practicing law or do you ever think you'll return to it later down the line. I didn't practice law. I had my undergrad in law. So I graduated from that and I was going to go to law school, which is when you, you do, do the law school, LSAT, law school, then the bar, and then you can practice law. I can't legally practice law. However, I have more of like a legal background, so I understand it. And I do want to practice law in the future. So my plan is, you know, stream forever. And then when I get tired of streaming, or I probably won't though, when I do want to like do something else, I'm probably going to go back to school and then study more for, for law, go to law school probably. And then, and then, and then be a lawyer one day. That's how I feel. That's just how I fucking feel. Why are you judging me? Judging gank is like a lawyer. I miss it, bro. Feels like a superpower. You know, no one can fuck with you when you know the law. When you know what to do when someone is infringing upon a contract or your rights or anything, they fuck with you even at all. They're done, bro. You're done, bro. No one's gonna abuse me. No one's gonna abuse my friends, period. Worst date you ever had. Oh, this is a fun one. There was this guy that I met on Tinder. It's the end of like, like the second or third date, I forget. And we're hanging out. He pulls me aside and he goes, listen, I need to tell you something. I don't know if you're gonna want to be with me after you find out about this, but I really like you and I really like spending time with you and I really wanna be with you. And I don't think I can keep doing that unless you know this thing about me. And so I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> like <laughs> I sit down on the couch and I'm just like, tell me whatever you need to tell me. And he goes, I'm not making this up. I work for the mafia. <laughs> he goes, 
I work for the mafia and I don't kill anybody, but I do a lot of stuff that's questionable and I can't tell you too much now, but I just need you to understand that that's my career and you need to understand that if you're going to be with me. And I am, com I didn't know what the fuck to say. I didn't know what to say. I sat there and I just, I just looked at him and I was just like, thank you for telling me. I really appreciate you confiding in me about that. Just sitting there and I'm like, oh fuck, how do I, what do I do? <laughs> Because he was a nice guy. He was funny. But I'm not fucking with the mafia, okay? Let me just tell... I... Listen, mob wife aesthetic was a trend on TikTok. I don't want that trend to be my life. We hung out a little bit more. Told him he was a great guy. And I really liked hanging out with him. But I told him, I don't really think that lifestyle is for me. And I won't be saying anything to anyone. And we went our separate ways. <laughs> Do you have followers from other countries? Most of my followers are from the US and the rest of my followers are from like every other country you could imagine. I have so many followers from like Europe, Asia, like everywhere. I have a very nice diverse group of people that watch me and I'm very lucky for that because I learned so much from them and through them. So thank you for teaching me stuff. Would you rather have to be outside on a dangerously hot day or a dangerously cold one? Probably a dangerously cold day because you can layer. I could wear 10 hats and 30 undergarments. Not that I wanna do that because that would make me feel like I'm dying, but I could do that and I could maintain warmth. However, on a hot day, all you do is experience the under boob sweat all fucking day. I don't wanna go through that. You can't escape that. So cold day, 1 million percent. What's on your bucket list? One thing that's on my bucket list is going to Japan for like a month. I just wanna travel to Japan. I think if you asked every streamer what they wanted to do in their life as a bucket list thing, I'm pretty sure nine times out of 10, they would say, I wanna go to Japan. I really do wanna go, okay? I want it more than they do. No, I'm, I'm fucking with you. I, I just, I wanna go. I think Pasa and I plan to do that in November, so maybe stick around and you might see us going there together in November. Is your first name just M or is it short for something? My nickname, people call me is M. I prefer that because otherwise it sounds like I'm in trouble and you're my mom. <laughs> But my real name is Emelina. Most people just call me Emerome or M because it's easier. I am trying to get used to people calling me Emmy because I think that's fine. If you want to call me Emmy, that's fine. It's not a bad nickname. I don't hate it. But um, my sister was like the only person that called me Emmy growing up. So I just feel like that's reserved for her, if that makes sense. But I'm getting used to it and it's okay if you call me Emmy. That's fine. Was it difficult at first when you started streaming? No, because I told myself every day that I was primarily and most likely going to be a failure. So any amount of success that I felt, aside from like obviously setting a schedule for myself, I was consistent, that I was very consistent. But aside from that, I told myself every day, I'm probably not going to succeed because 99% of people don't succeed. And when I did, I was very happy. <laughs> It's really hard to be upset or feel like you're going through something hard when you just feel lucky to be doing it in the first place. Spending all of my money on like tech upgrades, every penny I made, I put back into like upgrading my technology, upgrading my camera, upgrading my computer. That shit was fucking hard. Watching all your money fly out the door, hard. But after that, it's smooth sailing. And if you love what you do, it's easy, I think. Maybe one in 15 days, I have like a rough day or I'm too tired and I just don't want to stream. But for the most part, it's pretty consistent. I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty good to go, you know? Are there times fans can be in Discord chat and talk with you? I do a movie night with my fans and my community every Friday night. So I am in a Discord chat with people every Friday night in the Discord. Recently, we watched all the Alien movies and now because Alien, the new Alien just came out, I really liked it. I had a lot of fun. I love doing those movie nights. They're a really good excuse for me to watch some good films with you guys so definitely join the discord if you're not already in there how did you and pasta meet we met i think in a himmy kane lobby if you know who himmy kane is he's a streamer he makes lobbies for among us and other things like that and i think we met through one of those lobbies and the second i met her i was like she is so funny she is so fun to be around she's got the best laugh and then we kind of instantly got along we spent new years together and then we were inseparable after that we just could not shut the fuck up i love that woman i'm so lucky to have her in my life what is the biggest goal you had as a kid that you've achieved? Oh, I think just like doing YouTube and, and streaming and playing video games for a living, probably the biggest goal. <laughs> I was addicted to Minecraft as a kid. I was addicted to Skyrim and games and everything, like literally everything. I'd be four or five, six years old. My parents would be like, you have to limit how much you can game a day because you can't make money doing this. And then now I fucking do. <laughs>
That was definitely like a dream goal, but it seemed completely unattainable. I remember watching like old YouTubers do playthroughs of games and stuff. And so I'd say just like my whole career in general, huge goal that I did not think I could reach. And here I am. What are some philosophies you believe in or follow? I feel like there's one that's like, okay, the more you know, the more you realize you know nothing. Is that a philosophy? Because I really appreciate that one. Everything I've learned in life has taught me that I'm a dumbass. <laughs> Is that bad? Listen, I feel like I can learn anything I want and I could achieve anything I want. However, in order to do that, you have to acknowledge that whatever it is you wanna go for, you probably don't know much about. So it's better to go into it understanding that you don't know anything versus being like held back by the idea that you know something and then looking for confirmation bias and just being wrong. Although I will say I have recently realized that I am knowledgeable with what I do, so streaming, etc. And sometimes I go into my own career and let people who do, who know less than me objectively tell me what to do. And then later on, I realize, okay, wait a second. I am actually knowledgeable in this and I shouldn't just absentmindedly listen to everybody that has something to say. So that's something. But generally going into situations thinking like, okay, I don't know everything. Let me be open to anything is better. How tall are you? I'm five foot four, an average sized woman in North America. This is the average height. Please don't call me short. Everybody and their great grandma calls me short. I don't need to be called short. I don't need to be called short. When do we get to see IRL videos with pasta? That's gonna happen. Once I get my information back about my visa, which should be soon, like I said, I can travel to the States again. When you apply for a visa in the US, you cannot enter the country, period. So hopefully we can do stuff in the near future. Ever thought of adding gaming news slash updates slash drama to your YouTube channel? Here and there, sure. When it's something that I care about, yes. However, if I'm being really honest, I see a lot of content creators when they start covering any amount of news, they fall down a rabbit hole of viewers expecting them to cover everything. The second you're considered like a news channel, every single person kind of puts the onus on you to be responsible for all drama. Recently, we saw that with Moist Critical. Moist Critical um, covers some news, mostly news that he finds really interesting for himself or really funny. That's what he covers. It's not like mainstream shit. It's primarily stuff that he finds interesting. So I understand that, but a lot of people just look at him as generally a news channel. So when he didn't cover something that they thought he needed to cover right away, they started attacking him for it. And I don't want to fall down that rabbit hole. Even if it is more lucrative, I don't want to feel like I ever have to do something. I only want to make content that I like. So hopefully I can keep doing that. What's the best part of being a streamer? Doing whatever you want. Doing whatever you want. <laughs> That's the best part. Gaming. Gaming, I love gaming. Somebody said some nice stuff, so I'm just gonna skip over that, but that's really nice. Thank you, Imaginary Amy Lou. Would you try something out of your comfort zone like skydiving, boxcar racing? I went skydiving one time and I loved it. In fact, I loved it so much that I wanted to get my skydiving license so I could skydive by myself. And then I realized at the time that was very expensive and I didn't wanna do that. I would totally race a car. I would 100% race something. I think that'd be really fun for me. He's a three, but he's got a forklift operator license <laughs> okay, listen, this is the truth of what I find attractive. I'm gonna break it down for you. Doesn't matter if you're in the low out of tens for looks, it doesn't matter. What matters to a lot of women, specifically me, but a lot of women is the following. One, do you take care of yourself? It is objectively attractive when a man or woman takes care of themselves. It's just attractive. You can go up three points just from taking care of yourself. I mean like parenting yourself. So making sure you're eating right, making sure that you are working out, making sure that you're consuming healthy material that you are trying to learn. All of those things, taking care of your skin, showering regularly, all of that is really important. Like taking care of yourself is one of the most attractive things you can do as a human being. And I think a lot of people would agree. So comment down below if you agree. Second thing that's very attractive specifically to me, and I'm not sure if this is for everybody, but having a drive and a lust for life is essential to me. I am a very passionate person. I love what I love. I love living. I love being alive. I'm a very happy person. If you don't have a lot of passion for what you do, <laughs> that's 
that's just me though. Like that's just my, t that's my personal taste. And then the other thing for me that you need to be is funny. If you're a three, but you take care of yourself and you're passionate about forklifting, we got something, you know? Where have you traveled to besides Italy and any places you recommend? I loved Chile. Going to Chile was amazing. The Chilean people were amazing. I loved Chile. I went there like a while ago, but I hiked through the Torres del Paine mountain range. I backpacked through it for like a week. That shit, amazing. I would do that again in a heartbeat. That was so much fun. I've been to a lot of other places though. I've been like to London, England. I've been to Barcelona. I've been to Greece. I've been to Croatia. I've been to Austria. I've been to France. I liked Paris a lot and I spent two months in Italy and that was the best time ever. You know, I've been a lot of places and I'm very lucky to have been to a lot of places and I want to do a lot more traveling. Could you do a one react video with Bite Arms? Much love to you and Pasta. I would love to. He's a busy guy and if he has time, I would love to have him on. I think it'd be a really fun collab. Do you ever feel burnout during the streams and how do you handle it? Typically, I don't. I think it depends on the day. Like if I'm having a day where I'm really tired, sometimes I'll feel burnout. I think that's very normal for anybody. I feel like if I don't have any time to do anything else, if I'm doing like 10 hour streams back to back to back, I think I'd feel burnout from that. Cause I think I would just want to have some personal time to like stare at the ceiling or play a video game like off stream or go outside, you know, like touch some grass. Did you go to college 11 days till I move into my dorm for my freshman year of college? That's so exciting. Congrats on your first year in school. I went to the University of Guelph for animal biology because I wanted to be a vet. And then I left after a semester and then I went to Toronto Metropolitan University, downtown Toronto, and I studied uh, business law. And I studied entrepreneurship. I almost double majored. I loved it. It was a lot of fun. And I remember my time in a dorm was really, really, really fun. So you're going to like that a lot. And uh, I hope you get a meal card because that was like the best part for me. <laughs> How's life been treating you? Generally, really, really, really good. I do wish that I was moved already, but it is what it is. Do you acknowledge Roman Reigns as your tribal chief? I really like Roman Reigns. <laughs> I think he's the best. I also really like wrestling. I got into it last year and it's really cool. It's like an art form and I really appreciate that about it. And I like the violence and the sweaty men and the sweaty girls. I'm sorry. What do you want me to do? Fucking sue me. What is the biggest life lesson you've learned? Don't give everybody 100% of your energy and your time right away. Let them work from 0% to 100%. One of my really good friends, Swoozy, taught me that when he was around like during some of the rougher times in my life. He really told me that I give people 100% of me when I meet them. And that's a very optimistic thing to do. I've always been a people pleaser my whole life. And I've been working on that, like getting away from that. I think it's essential for people to be really careful about who they give their time and their energy to and their trust to, especially if you're a woman. But I know men go through this too. Really, really, really be careful who you trust and make sure that you're okay. That is probably the biggest lesson that I've learned. And then I think the second most important thing to me is knowing that any problem I face is like a micro part of my life. And if I take a step back and look at the big picture, it's probably not that big of a deal. I can get through anything. And if I want to achieve something in life, I can, I can achieve it. I just need to work towards it and I'll, I'll get there. I think the trust thing is number one, not being a people pleaser. Number one, making sure that I'm taking care of myself. Number one, so that I never get taken advantage of again. <laughs> that's, that's all I'll say. <laughs> I got through a lot of these, but there's still a lot more. I would totally be down to do another video. If you guys really want to see another one, please let me know. It's really hard to get through all these, but I do answer questions on stream. So if you want a specific question answered, you can ask here or you can ask while I'm live on Twitch. I really love doing this though. It was kind of fun opening up to you guys. And uh, I'd really appreciate it if you guys could like the video and comment down below if you want to see another one of these or if you have another question for me specifically, because I'm going to go through and I'm probably going to answer as many comments as I can. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a really great day and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba.